Hey guys, I just had to change. You are not stable, so I had to make you stable. I'm using a cereal box now, don't worry. Okay, Kayla, this looks so good. Okay, so this next book is called, my TBR is just gonna be huge. Huge, I tell you, huge, it's already massive. Huge, huge, so many books. We need to tell the publishers to slow down, slow down the pace. We cannot keep up over here. Everyone, it's me Jess. I almost didn't make a video today because I've had such a busy week <laughs> and we shall see when it gets posted. I'm gonna do a light edit so pardon any I don't know pardon me for not delivering a video that's edited as diligently as I normally would edit it but better a video that's not finally edited then no video at all correct correct yes okay well with all of that preamble out of the way let's get to the heart of this video which is to tell you about a list of 16 maybe 17 new releases that are coming out in 2024 most of these are coming out in the first half of 2024 that were selected by the reviewers, critics, and I guess editors ultimately of the Globe and Mail, which is Canada's national newspaper, kind of like the New York Times, but in Canada. It's Canadian, eh? Um, <laughs> and I went through the list. I didn't, uh, I, I kind of weeded it out a little bit. I'm not talking about any nonfiction books. So I'm only talking about fiction books on the list. Some of them look really, really good. I always wonder how these lists get put together. This is not curated in any way by moi, by myself. This is just curated by the Globe and Mail. And I'm just going through the list and going, I'm just reacting to it, talking about it with you all here on the channel. These are not recommendations by any means on my part. Uh, we're just going to take a look at the list together. Okay, so first book on the Globe and Mail list is Burma Sahib by Paul Thoreau. This maybe is out as we speak. It says January. This list was actually published on January 8th, so I'm a little bit late. I'm about a month late getting to it. I have never read anything by Paul Thoreau. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever read anything by this author. I've certainly heard of the author, but I've just never read anything of his. This sounds really interesting though. It says a new novel. It's this, so this is a new novel exploring George Orwell's early life in Burma, where it was a place officer in colonial Burma and apparently this experience really transformed him into the anti-colonist writer that he became and so it's a fictional account but it says that the main character Eric Blair who's based on George Orwell is fleshed out from what we know about Orwell in this early part of his life at this point in history. I guess Burma was part of the British Raj at the time. So it's a fictional account of Breyer's life and it apparently adds a new dimension to what we already know about George Orwell from a historical perspective. So it's fictional. Sounds good. Sounds really good. So the next book on the list is by uh, Canadian author. This is a debut novel by Canisia Lubrin. It sounds really interesting as well. It sounds kind of experimental. Code Noir by Canisia Lubrin. It's her fictional debut and it takes as its starting point, this sounds so interesting to me, it takes as its starting point the real life Code Noir, which I had never heard of, set out originally by Louis XIV of France, and it defined the conditions of slavery in within the French Empire at that time. And originally, the original document of the Code Noir has 59 articles, and the novel, uh, Code Noir has 59 linked stories. Now that sounds like may, might not work very well, but 
Um, maybe it works really well. I'd be curious to see. It's described as a, a 59 braided stories from many different styles too. So like dystopia, futuristic fantasy, historical fiction. So that sounds very experimental, but I think that she is a very respected author. She won the Griffin Prize for poetry. Yeah, it just sounds really interesting. Based on these these 59 decrees from 1685. Well, that just sounds really interesting to me. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of experimental things happening in the list. When I was looking it over, I thought it was really interesting how much experimental fiction there is happening right now. So yeah, the next one is another example of this experimental approach to writing fiction. I'm not sure if we like it, we don't like it. I'd be curious to see what you all think of these ideas. The third book is Alphabetical Diaries by Sheila Hetty. So Sheila Hetty says that she wrote this novel by loading up like over half a million words into Excel, into like an Excel spreadsheet, and then had the software do a data analysis essentially of the most used phrases and like looking for patterns in the phrases and all of these phrases and words were loaded in from her personal journals over, I guess, a pretty long period of time, 10 years worth of diaries together. And so phrases like, I hate you, <laughs> for example. Then the novel is based on that data analysis and the insights that she got from doing that data analysis. This is the novel that came of it. Wait, this sounds very, very experimental. I'm not sure what the result is. I've never read anything by Sheila Hetty before. I know people who have really raved about her other books, but I just have never been, it's never really attracted me to read her books. I don't know why, just, I don't know. I, I, I think she's, she, people love her work. She's, I, I think this novel sounds very, very inventive. It'll be interesting to see, I might, I might dive into that one. The Globe and Mail writes, Hetty's book, An Act of Narrative Alchemy, Transforming Memoir into Fiction, was created by putting 10 years worth of diaries into an Excel spreadsheet, then ordering the resulting sentences alphabetically to allow patterns to emerge. That's all it says. They're very brief descriptions in this list. The next novel on the list is Wild Houses by Colin Barrett. This sounds really good as well. Uh, I think this is a debut. It comes out in March. This is a debut novel about crimes of desperation. Da, da, da. Crimes of desperation. It's set in Ireland's uh, County Mayo. The story follows a simmering feud between the small time dealer Cillian, Eng Cillian English. Chilean English? Again, pronunciations. Chilean? Killian? Killian. I bet it's Killian. Killian English and two brothers who have a grip over the town. And I think it spills over into violence and like there's an ultimatum and a revenge fantasy. It sounds really, really good as well. And it's by an author that I've never read anything from. Apparently his short story collections, two short story collections, Homesickness and Young Skins were very, very well received. Uh, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, has a memoir coming out, you know, you know, called Closer Together. I don't think I'm going to read that one, but maybe some people will want to. The next novel is actually a new novel by Miranda July, which I don't think Miranda July has published anything in quite some time. This sounds like a very Miranda July type of novel. It's about a 45 year old artist who goes on a road trip potentially go, goes on a road trip from New York to LA. She leaves her young son behind and her husband behind and she ends up uh, on, a, on, a, on a journey of self-discovery. She's supposed to learn about herself and the, they're supposed, she's supposed to experience a reinvention of what it means to be a 45 year old woman, female artist. It says excavates, excavates? our beliefs about life lived by a woman. 
45 year old woman artist with a young child. That sounds like a very Miranda July type of book to me. That's coming out in May. Uh, the next one is, well, it's funny because this sort of looks like it could be short stories, but I think it's three short stories that are linked. This is uh, the, sixth, the sixth book on the list is American Spirits by Russell Banks. This is a set of three stories that is all, they're all set in the same small town in uh, New York State. I think it's called Sam Dent, where the sweetheart, where the setting of the Sweet Hereafter was, which was the novel that he published in 1997. I believe it was made into a film, and the novel explores the hostile undercurrents of American communities and wider American politics. Masculine rage, masculine disaffection, the MAGA ethos, guns, that sort of thing. I'm not sure if I'll be picking that one up. Although, I, I mean, it would probably be interesting. Described as being an author who is an unsung, underrated author. Her name is Margot uh, Livesey, Livesey. Uh, and this book is coming out in February. Apparently she's been writing perceptive understated novels for decades. I've not heard of her. So let me know in the comments below if you've heard of her and <laughs> hopefully I'm not butchering her name. Uh, this story is called The Road from Bell Haven and it's set in the 19th century and it's about a, a young orphaned girl who leaves. She's an orphan, a teenage orphan who after leaving her grandparents' farm, so I guess orphaned but still has grandparents, uh, goes to, leaves her, says it leaves her, leaves her grandparents' farm to marry a tailor's apprentice in Glasgow. And that's really all it says in the description there. Let's see if I can find out anything else about it. 19th century farm girl's life and maturity are complicated by her uncontrollable visions of accident and disaster. I don't know why the Globe and Mail can't write better descriptions, seriously. So their protagonist, Lily Craig, it says the protagonist, Lily Craig, I'm getting this from the New York Times, the protagonist, Lily Craig, has a gift. She sees pictures of, em of events before they take place. It happens first when she's 10 with a vision in which her grandfather's scythe slips from a whetstone and injures his leg. Oh, interesting. This sounds good. So there's a magical element to the story there in terms of Lizzie's visions. The book follows Lizzie through youth and young adulthood. Uh, as a child, she attends a local school, reads Lewis Carroll, helps at home. I mean, I don't want to read too much about this. I guess she marries Taylor's apprentice. She goes to Glasgow and marries a Taylor's apprentice. So it must be kind of a coming of age story as well, I would imagine. Oh, that sounds really good. I always like discovering new writers and I find that these lists are a good way uh, to sometimes discover new writers. The next one sounds like if you like this sort of thing, it would be definitely for you. And if you're not into this sort of thing, you definitely won't like it. This is uh, it's a novel called The Book of Love by Kelly Link. And I think it's a debut novel as well. It's 640 pages. So there's that. You know, you all know how I like a big book. It's out in February. The story, the main premise of the story is that it's about a group of dead teenagers that were killed in a seaside New England town somewhere in Massachusetts. And they are trying to bargain their way back into the world of the living. I know that <laughs> there's some fantasy in this novel. I don't really read fantasy very often, but I feel like this might appeal to me. I don't know, it's making me think a lot about reading Our Shared Night, although it's completely different, I would imagine. But it's just that it has animals. Apparently it has like magic animals in the fantastical. So I'm not sure if that would be for everyone. <laughs> but it sounds really interesting. Sounds like it could be good. I don't know anything about Kelly Link. I've never read anything of hers. I think she's really well known for um, her short story collections, but I've never read anything of hers. Let me know again in the comments below if you've read anything by Kelly Link. She was a Pulitzer Prize finalist, or at least it says so on the cover of the book. Let me know what you think about this, everyone, in the comments. 
there is a new novel being published. The Lost Novel of Gabriel Garcia Marquez is being published. It's called Until August. In the Globe and Mail's list, it's kind of cheeky, the Globe and Mail's list. It says, Cynical Cash Grab or Rescued Literary Gem. Whoa. I mean, I haven't been paying attention, so I don't know what the if what the controversy could be over this book, if there is any. If you have, let me know. As a decade after the great Colombian writer's death, his sons have pulled this final novel, written while he was struggling with dementia, out of a Texas archive. I are they trying to say don't read it? Like here is on their list of most anticipated books, and they read up this kind of not very <laughs> positive write up about it. I was fine. The Global Mail a bit surprising. So let's see what the story is about. So this is about Anna Magdalena Bach, who has been happily married for 27 years and has no reason to escape a life she has made with her husband and children. And yet every August she travels by ferry here to the island where, she, where her mother is buried and for one night takes a new lover. Uh, it says, across sultry Caribbean evenings full of salsa and boleros, lotharios and conmen, Anna journeys further each year into the hinterland of her desire and the fear hidden in her heart. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what that would be like. I wonder if anyone's interested in reading that. Let me know if you're interested in that one. I read... 100 Years of Solitude, and I know people love Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but I am not a big fan. I just had a really hard time with 100 Years of Solitude. I, I didn't like it that much, but I know most people really do enjoy his books. The next one on the Globe and Mail's list is a book called... Oh, this sounds really good. I might read this. This sounds really good. And it's funny because I haven't read anything of hers yet. It's called Parasol... Parasol Against the Axe. Yeah, this is by uh, Helen Oyoyemi. I haven't read anything of hers. Uh, but she has quite a few books published and I've looked, I've seen her books in the bookshop and just never picked one up. I've never really heard anyone talking about it. I think maybe just the time when I started making videos. Anyway, I haven't read anything by Helen Oyoyemi yet, but this sounds really good. The title sounds like a, a death metal band waiting to happen, Parasol Against the Axe. Apparently it's about a young woman named Hero. She travels to Prague, it's set in Prague, and apparently Prague is like a character in the story. Traveling there for a bachelorette weekend, and that's really all I know about it, but it sounds good. It sounds like I might. it might be kind of a good, might be good. They all sound good. No, they don't all sound good, but that one sounds particularly good to me. So I might be keeping my eyes out for that one. This, the next two also sound amazing. There's James. The, so I think most people have heard of the book James by Percival Everett. It's supposed to be coming out in March. So this, there's been some buzz about this. He has written a comedic reimagining of Huckleberry Finn told from the point of view of uh, Finn's friend and escaped slave Jim. So that should be really good. Why is it called James? Oh, Jim James. I guess that must be why. I've read The Trees by Percival Everett and I thought it was really good. And I just went to see American Fiction, which was based on a book by Percival Everett. If you haven't seen that film yet, definitely check it out. So this next book on the list is called The Alternatives by Kaylin Hughes. It looks really, really good. It's, uh, so it's about three sisters who uh, travel together from various different places to come together in the Irish countryside to find their fourth sister who has gone astray. <laughs> uh, and so... I think it's about their relationship as sisters. They're all in their, I don't know if they're elderly. Oh no, they're in their 30s. They're all in their 30s. They're all single. They all have PhDs. And I don't know, it just sounds interesting to me. It says it's the alternatives is an unforgettable portrait of a family perched on our collective precipice told by one of Ireland's most gifted storytellers. 
I Like Me or an Irish Book by an Irish author. <laughs> that sounds really good and it's coming out in April. Also on this list is Long Island by Colm Tobin, uh, another Irish writer. This is a follow-up to his novel Brooklyn, which I've never read. Uh, it comes out in May and it's set 20 years after the time that Brooklyn, the story in Brooklyn, the character's name is Eilish, I believe, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. The character's name is Eilish Lacey and she chooses to raise the bastard child of her Italian-American plumber husband. So her Italian-American plumber husband has a child when he cheats on her and she decides to raise the child. I don't know if they're still together. I can't tell from the blurb. <laughs> so I don't know. I haven't read Brooklyn yet. I have one of Colm Tolbin's books on my a TBR spin list, but I have never read anything by Colm Tobin, and I've heard really good things. I've heard that, that I should. I've been told numerous times that I should. This next one is This Strange Eventful History by Claire Massoud. This sounds really good. This sounds something that I would really, sounds like something that I would really enjoy, I think. Another author who I've never heard of. Uh, this is historical fiction. It's set on the backdrop of World War II and the Algerian Revolution. It covers, it covers seven decades, so it's the story spans seven decades from 1940 to 2010 about a family. Well, there's a giveaway for this book, guys. There's a giveaway for this book for US only. There's a giveaway for a couple of these books, actually. I think there's a giveaway for the American Spirits book as well on Goodreads. There's a giveaway for a couple of these books on uh, Goodreads, but only if you're in the US. <laughs> so check them out if you want to enter for the, the giveaway. The Strange Eventful History has a giveaway, and I think American Spirits has a giveaway as well. It's a multi-generational story of an Algerian French family, and it's probably really, really fascinating, I would think. As profoundly intimate as it is expansive, this strange eventful history is a tour de force. Why do they always use tour de force? One of those rare novels which a reader doesn't merely read but lives through with the characters. Well, that sounds, that sounds really interesting. If you like this sort of thing. <laughs> has to be, it has to be something that you like, right? There's a pretty good range I find in this list of different types of books, which is always nice. Okay, the next one I probably am not going to read, and I hope you don't unsubscribe from my channel when I say that I'm not a fan. Rachel Cusk has a new book coming out called Parade, and I know that the critics love her, but I read Second Place and I couldn't, I just did not like it. Uh, and this book sounds very similar. It says it's about art, womanhood, and violence. One which confronts and upends the conventions of storytelling. I mean... I don't know. Someone's going to have to convince me on Rachel Cusk. In the comments below, try to convince me on Rachel Cusk. It says a little bit more of a detailed description can be found. If you take a little deeper, it says midway through his life, an artist begins to paint upside down. Eventually he paints his wife upside down. He also makes her ugly. Other paintings are a great success. And then there are a couple of other storylines. Parade is a story that confronts and demolishes the conventions of storytelling. It surges past the limits of identity, character, and plot to tell a true story about, fam about art, family, morality, gender, and how we compose ourselves. I mean, again, I even that description just is not, that is not drawing me in. I don't know why. It just feels pretentious. Sorry, I don't know. I just have a hard time with it. But anyway, I'm sure there are a lot of Rachel Cusk lovers out there. So there's a new book coming for you. <laughs> it's coming out in June. So keep an eye out for that one if you're a Rachel Cusk lover. The last novel on the list is called Caledonian Road by Andrew O'Hagan, another author whose work I've never read before, but this sounds really interesting. This sounds like it could be good too. This is about an art historian's precipitous, speedy fall from grace in London's fashionable art scene following an entanglement with a student. Uh, it says Campbell Flynn, art historian and biographer of Vermeer, 
always knew that when his life came crashing down, it would happen in public, yet he never imagined that a single year in London would expose so much. Ooh, this sounds good. <laughs> it sounds very juicy. <laughs> Apparently the novel is written uh, like in uh, the Victorian style, but it's a social novel. It's got a large cast of characters. But anyway, never read anything by him. That sounds kind of interesting and sounds like a good book. So, all right, well, let me know in the comments below what you think about this list, if there's anything there that piques your interest. Thanks everybody so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Most of oh, the first bad man. That was her first novel. So she wrote the first bad man in 2015. Has she written anything else since then? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I digress. The first book on the Globe and Mail list this is so shaky. I really think I need to do something about it. I don't feel like doing anything about it, but I'm so busy. Oh, you really are so shaky. Shall we move you on to something more stable? Shall we move them on to something more stable? Do you think, Granola? What do you think would be more stable? You? No, definitely not. See how bad it's shaking? Okay, let's try to find something more stable. The third fictional book on the list that I want to talk about is At the Off Good. The third bit, the bit, the bit. 